Excited lang kasi meron tayong one. Oh, ngay, yung mga um, nandito, okay ba kayo? Okay, so welcome. Gising welcome. na ba? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> kailangan kailangan natin magkape, Pastor Glenn. Oh, yeah. Pastor Glenn, how was your week na lang? Yeah, my week was good. Okay, um, basically because the birthday yung kapatid ko. So kahit Oy. na nasa probinsya siya. So, si Kuya Mo. We got, yes, si Mark. So, bro, happy birthday. Happy birthday kay Mo. Pinati rin dito. Kailan ko birthday niya? Uh, March 12. Okay. March 12. So, recent lang. Recent lang. Oo. Yan. Ako, tatunungin mo ba? Ako, kamusta? Ako <laughs> pala, kamusta din? Ako, How was your week? week? How was your week? Um, um Okay din naman. Nag-birthday ako pero March 7 naman yan. Ah, March 7. So, yeah, may mga kasabay ka doon. Happy birthday sa mga kasabay ni Richard. Kailan na nyo ko sino kayo? Okay. <laughs> naging batian. Parang general lang yun. No? Parang family na lang general. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. But, But actually, ba't kamusta yung ko mo? Yeah. Okay naman. Um, we, nag-ano kami, galing din kami ni Ad ng ano eh, medyo nagta-travel-travel kami oh. from Subi to Manila. So, Ano rin, masaya din naman. So, ingat-ingat lang din. But one of the things actually, Pastor Glenn, that this week na medyo na-remember ko lang, no? Na-recall ko na since March that it's actually been siguro a year or little a year na since our lockdown. Kinunito na na-feel nyo yun or naalala nyo yun na ano, last year, nag-start yung lockdown, eh, no? Oo, kasi actually, in our case of family, it's actually because of the birthday of my brother, kaya siya lumipad sa province, tapos nag-lockdown. Kaya nice. ngayon, hanggang ngayon, nandun pa rin siya sa, Grabe. sa provincia. And siguro, speaking of that, no, uh, what we actually see amidst ganito na, ganito na kahaba to, uh, one year to, is I hope we've seen God's faithfulness yep. amidst all of this. Na yung grace ni Lord is still present. That He has yep. not let go of us, but rather He, he is still sovereign even yep. in our current circumstances and situation. I agree with that, Pastor Glenn. And one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to actually watch this update, this video of how God has been really faithful mm. sa church natin, sa life, actually, specifically sa lives ng students yeah. natin, sa campus. So you, we, we know that one of our heart, di ba, as a church, is really to reach out to our students, mm. to make sure that they are walking with Christ yeah. and helping, discipling them. So we're going to watch this video of God, how God has really been able to move even in this pandemic na God is not limited with that kahit online lang tayo most of the time. That's so, right. All right. So, let's watch this video. Our whole movement started through campus ministry and this year, our rallying cry is still to expand and grow campus ministry. If there's anything we learned from the pandemic, it's that relationships matter. When the world was on lockdown, and we needed to be physically isolated from each other, our relationships still grew stronger. Through victory groups, online and on-site services, outreach events, and campus convergences, campus missionaries and students intentionally reached out to and spurred each other to grow in the relationship with God and His people. We've been holding webinars and talks that aim to enrich their well-being despite the stresses they face so that they can experience health and wholeness in Christ. We want our students to experience the abundant life that can only be found in Jesus. Reaching the next generation can get challenging, but nothing is too hard for the Lord. You play a big part in advancing God's kingdom through campus ministry. Thank you for your partnership, your unwavering prayers, and your heart and efforts in making disciples for the next generation. Let's be in faith that we will continue to witness God do amazing things in and through the lives of the next generation. Together, let's change the campus and change the world. Uh, can we give God a clap of praise for that? Come on. Woo! Sobrang ganda. <laughs> Sobrang galing ni God. And one of the things, Kaylin, actually, that I remember even in, in this church, so one of the students that we have here, Nalalako, actually, recently we had our victory weekend. And this student, yes. I've been discipling him for two years. Pero, biru mo, nag victory weekend siya online wow. during the pandemic. And he experienced God. He 
he really surrendered his life to God. So, yun lang yung mga few of the many stories of how God has been able to really move in the lives of our students. So, again, sabi nga ni Pastor Joe that nothing is too hard for God and we're gonna continue to reach out to the next generation, disciple them, believe in them, believe in their destiny. Yun. Okay. That's right. Thank you for that, Richard. You know, church, as we begin to worship God, as we start this service off worshiping to God, I'd like to invite all of you. For those of you who are here, I'd like all of you to stand up already. We're going to be worshiping God. But before we do so, why don't we just take some time to pray right now. Let's just pray. Let's invite God's presence. Lord, we, we come before you this morning grateful. Grateful for your grace. Grateful for your faithfulness. Grateful for your presence. Thank you, Lord. And indeed, when you said in your word that you will be with us until the very end of age, no matter what circumstance, no matter what situation, indeed, you are with us, Lord God. We ask your presence to be with us, Lord God. We ask your presence to be with the people right now, wherever they are, Lord God. And thank you, and we, we invite you, Jesus. We invite you, God. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to be with us, minister to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's worship. Without you, without you, 
you know I'm lost without you Where would that be without you, without you Who among you believe that soon we will fill this place again, amen And sooner more lives will be changed in this place, hallelujah As I've said earlier Let's clap our hands like this because, you know, it's also a declaration of our worship to God. Let's go. Say, I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. Come on, you say, hey. Brand new hands, 
sense your presence here in this place. Lord, for those of us who are watching with us online right now, I pray we will recognize as well your presence in their midst. And even at this moment, oh God, I sense that God is just lifting up our heads. He's lifting up our perspective. He's lifting up where we're focused on, even at this time, so that we will not look at anything else, but look on God or look to God. I believe that many of us, you know, we've been very, we're on the spot. We're, we're always, lagi po tayo nakatutok sa balita ngayon, sa dami ng mga nangyayari sa atin ngayon, di ba? At this moment, I believe that God is here and He wants to minister peace. He wants to minister hope. He wants to minister faith. He wants to minister joy to all of us and even for those of us with us online. And so, can I ask you, by faith, close your eyes. But instead of bowing down, try to close your eyes and look up. Lord, we look to you as the author and perfecter of our faith. You are the initiator and the developer of our faith. And right now, that is what you're doing. God, wherever we are right now, some of us, maybe we are in a hospital. But at this moment, Lord, you desire for us to fix our eyes on you. Some of us, we're at home. Some of us, we are in our offices. Lord, kung saan man po kami ngayon, Lord, we choose to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Birth faith right now. Speak faith right now. Breathe faith right now. For even as a people, Lord, you are calling us in this season to be a people of faith. And there is grace available for us. You know, as I want to read what the Bible says, in Psalm 121, it says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? In this season that we are in, ngayon po na may nagkakaroon ulit ng surge o nagkakaroon ulit ng pagtaas ng cases, where will our help come from? Where will our security come from? In verse 2, it says, My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. How many of you know our genuine our eternal, secure hope is in God, is in God, and God alone. Amen? He is the one who is the creator of heaven and the earth, meaning He is in control of everything. He is sovereign in all things. Verse 5, it says, The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil, and He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Lord, we just want to speak right now. Lord, maybe we know of people who are not well at this time. Maybe we are watching this. And Lord, we are in our hospital beds or we are in our sick beds at home. Father in heaven, we look to you as the one who helps us in every season of our lives. And we declare this scripture. Lord, you are our keeper. You are the one who keeps us strong. You are the one who gives us strength. You're the one who heals, oh God. And so right now we pray, we speak your healing upon those, Lord, who are not feeling well at this time. Father, we speak strength to our lungs. We speak strength to our bodies, oh God. Lord, we thank you that you will protect us from any virus from any bacteria, oh God. Lord, we thank you. Lord, your headship protection is upon your children. And so right now, I pray, Lord, some of us, Lord, even in our homes, Lord, there's anxiety, there's worry. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would quiet the worries and anxieties because you are our peace. You're the one who upholds us and you keep us safe under your wings, oh God. And we rely on that and we receive that peace right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Church, I believe there's a grace also for us today to not just be recipients of that grace from the Lord or that peace from God, but also for our nation. We want to pray at this time, you know, to for our government officials, even for those of us who are in the front lines, even as we combat, 
you know, this wave, next wave of COVID. How many of you know the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective? And we as a church, there is power when we pray. Even for those of us who are joining us online, there is power when you believe in the prayer. When you believe that God is able and God is willing and that we lift up our prayers to Him, God is the one who's in control and moves. Amen? Lord, we commit to You our nation. First and foremost, we commit, Lord God, our government officials. Lord, we speak a blessing. Lord, here in Quezon City, Lord, tinataas po namin sa inyo si Mayor Joy Belmonte. Lord, si Vice Guillan, O oh God. And Lord, yung mga konsihal. Lord, yung mga barangay officials. Lord, tinataas po namin sila, Lord God. Even yung mga empleyado po ng uh, City Hall. And not just here in Quezon City, but here in Metro Manila. And also, Lord God, in the nation. Lord, we speak, Lord, your grace upon them. Let your wisdom be upon them, Lord, as they try to navigate, as they try to lead, as they try to strategize and um, stop the spread of this virus, Lord, for this next wave, oh God. Lord, we say, Lord, let there be wisdom, let there be grace, let there be protection upon them, oh God. Thank you that you will ordain their steps, oh God. You will orchestrate their steps. Even the police forces, Lord, even those who are, Lord, on the front lines, the barangay, Lord, officials, Lord, thank you po. Kayo po yung magbibigyan ng kalakasan sa kanila. Kayo po yung magbibigyan ng protection sa kanila. Lord, tinataas din po namin sa inyo yung mga frontliners. Lord, yung mga nagsiserve po sa mga hospital ngayon. Lord, we've heard that even here in Quezon City Hospital, General Hospital, Lord, marami na po pasyente, overwhelmed na po yung mga doktor. Lord, we speak right now. Let there be divine grace. Lord, we speak, let there be strength, Lord, upon their bodies once again. Lord, we speak, Lord, na kayo po yung magpalakas ng kanilang pangangatawan. Kayo po yung magpalakas, Lord God. Lord, we see through eyes of faith yung mga doktor, yung mga nurse, Lord, yung mga hospital staff, Lord. Salamat, Panginoon, yung kanilang kalakasan, hindi lang po nanggagaling sa multivitamins. Hindi lang po nanggagaling sa kinakain nila, nanggagaling po ito sa inyo. And so, well, we lift them up to you. Lord, would you please reach out and strengthen them. Lord, thank you that you are their protector. Thank you that you are the one who is, Lord, a shield around them. God, Lord, we lift them up to you. We thank you. Lord, we will combat, Lord God, this next wave. It will not progress further. Lord, we speak, Lord God, even through faith, Lord God, that it will not spread further. God, Lord, we thank you that we will see it come down again, O God. Thank you that we will see the efficacy, Lord God, even of those vaccines. Lord, we will see, Lord God, a curtailment, Lord God, of this spread. And Lord, we thank you, O God. We will see your deliverance upon this nation, even through, Lord, even through this pandemic, we will see your goodness, O God. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, magandang umaga po. Good morning, everyone. I hope that we keep an attitude of prayer. Every time we watch the news, I hope that we also have one eye in heaven and lift up our, those prayers to God because your prayers are powerful and effective. Amen? All right. Before you take your seats, pakinad naman po dun sa mga katabi natin. Mag-wave na lang tayo dyan. For those of you who are watching us online, thank you so much for being with us, attending the online service with us, and we know that your heart is also attuned to God at this time. And so thank you so much for making time. We hope that you're blessed as well with your families as you watch there in your homes. Now, um, as a church, again, um, as a church, our heart is not just to um, receive instructions from God, not just to hear the preaching, but also to celebrate community. And one way that we do celebrate community is through praying with one another. And that is why, for those of you who are online, please um, let us know how we can pray for you. Um, there's a chat, ba chat, chat box over there uh, in the FB and YouTube. Please put there your prayer request or you can message us uh, through this link that you find there in the room as well so that we can be praying with you. And not just pray, community or church community, hindi lang naman po siya prayer and worship lang din. Maganda to na experience natin when we are conversing with one another, when we are learning together, when we're processing things together. And that is why this March 21, as we've said last week, we're having on the spot the meeting. And so we've had this last year and marami na po tayong mga topics na pinag-usapan last year that were very helpful for us as a church. And now we're gonna do it again. We're going to be having a once-a-month meeting, online meeting, and we call this on the spot. 
And this coming March 21 at 6 p.m., it's a Sunday, we're going to be discussing a very crucial topic, I think a very relevant topic that is aligned with our current series that we will hear from Pastor Mike later. No? We're starting a brand new series in for today. This coming on the spot, we'll be talking about justice or biblical justice. And if you're interested to know more about that, please join us. We will give you the link, the Zoom link next week. Tama ba next week? Bibigyan natin next week yon para po makajoin kayo dun sa ating on the spot the meeting. And we will be learning from one of our, uh, I guess, very gifted, very smart pastor here in Katipunan, Pastor Michael. Michael Paderes. Okay, okay. So, akala ni Pastor Mike. Smart din naman si Pastor Mike Gayataw. No? Very smart din yan. Handsome. Magaling pang kumanta. Kanina kumanta po yan bago mag-service. And so, we're gonna be having Pastor Michael Paderes um, as our main uh, resource person for that about biblical justice. So, please join us next week on uh, with On The Spot, the meeting. Now, as we continue our worship unto the Lord, isa po sa mga pangamaraan na we know worship natin si God is to our giving. And before we give, our tithes and our offerings to the Lord, I want us to be reminded how faithful God is in providing for us. Because worship is a response. Worship po, hindi po natin ito minamanufacture. Ito po ay response natin sa kabutihan po ng Panginoon. And you know, I want to read what the Bible says in Psalm 145. Psalm 145, in verse 15, it says, The eyes of all who look to you, of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand. You satisfy, you, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all His ways and kind in all His works. That's why we give. That's why even in the midst of a pandemic, we can be in faith to give. We can have, you know, we can be less anxious and less worried when we give because we know this God that we serve, His eyes are on us. And as we look to Him, the Bible says He provides for us. He opens His hand so that not a single need of ours will be unmet because that's how good and faithful our God is. Amen? Lord, we thank You. Salamat, Panginoon. Kayo po ay napakabuting Diyos para sa amin. And so at this time, Lord, we pray and we worship You with our giving. Salamat, Panginoon, dahil kayo po ay nagbigay sa amin ng kakayahan, Lord God, na magproduce ng wealth even in this season. And for those of us, Lord God, who are still looking for jobs, Lord, we thank You. You will provide them with jobs. You will provide them, Lord, with food on their table. You will provide, Lord God, for their Meralco bill, Lord, kung ano mga mga bill yan. Salamat, Panginoon, dahil kayo po ang may kakayanan na mag-provide. Hindi lamang po sa aming trabaho, kundi, Lord God, sa mga ibang pangamaraan pa na meron kayo. And so, Lord, we look to you as our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And at this time, may you be pleased also as we give to you our worship through our tithes and our offerings. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, for those of you who are giving online, uh, please know that we have a safe and secure way of giving. And that is through um, our link. Uh, it's everynation.org.ph slash give. Or you can also go to victory.org.ph slash give. And for those of us who are on site, meron din po tayong mga paymaya, uh, meron tayong paymaya um, terminal doon. Kung gusto po natin magbigay via credit or debit card, meron dyan. And then, we also have offering envelopes that you can drop at the drop boxes so that uh, there's going to be social distancing and it's safer for all of us. No? Um, at this moment, I'd like to ask for us to be ready as we give or as we receive, rather, the word from God from one of our lead pastors in church, Pastor Mike Gayatao. Thank you, Pastor Christian. It is really, I'm really excited for the word. Thank you for the opportunity to share to us God's word ngayong, ngayong umaga po. But before anything else, I do want to congratulate, uh, congratulate Pastor Christian for uh, they found their, uh, thank, uh, uh, welcome back to your promised land. Next, 
Uh, they found their uh, new place back here in Quezon City. Para kung sinabi na Egypt yung pinanggalingan mo, no? Hindi naman po, hindi naman po. But uh, we're just so excited for you, the whole family. Uh, now they're back here living uh, dito po sa Quezon City. Thank, Pastor Christian, thank you for ano, uh, for praying for us this morning. I, I just really sense the spirit of encouragement from how many of you felt the presence of God while we were praying together. Kasama po ang mga nag worship with us online. As you were praying, Pastor Christian, I was just talking with someone a, a few days back. Sabi niya ganon, Pastor, para tayong nasa roller coaster. I mean, just the just the highs and the lows, the unexpected turns, the bigla na lang liliko, para po bang nakakabali ng leg, di ba? It's almost like that season, or it's been that season of us going through that roller coaster ride. We want to encourage you saying, kapit lang po. Tinan mo kayo katabi mo, sabi mo, kapit lang. <laughs> kapit, katip. Okay, let's hold on. Hold on to God. Hold fast to God. And I like how Pastor Christian described it earlier, looking up and focusing our eyes on Jesus because He is the author and perfecter of our faith. I'm excited for the word. I want us to open with a word of prayer. Let's just bow our heads right now. Lord, we thank you for your spirit of encouragement, Lord, that's upon us today. Lord, I thank you, God, that you will ready our hearts to, Lord, once again receive, Lord, a fresh word, Lord, from you. Lord, I thank you that you've caused us, you're causing us to hold on. Hold on, not to anything else, but only to you. Lord, I agree with Pastor Christian saying, Lord, we focus our eyes on you because you are truly the author and perfecter of our faith. Lord, we, we receive your grace today. Somebody say just the word grace, grace. Grace, grace. Hallelujah. You know, it's just, it's, let's just continue to pray right now. I just really sense, again, as Pastor Christian was ministering to us earlier today. Yes, as we've been going through, the Lord is saying, as you've been going through seasons of lockdowns, you know, seasons of being quarantined in your homes, the Lord is saying, I am much more concerned with, with what has been locked up in your hearts. The fear that has been locked up in your hearts. The Lord is saying, I want to minister to that right now. Your worries, your anxieties, the uncertainty, the, the feeling of being isolated or alone in this season. You know, that's that sense of hopelessness. The Lord wants to come in into the lockdowns of your hearts. Your, those, those feeling of Lord, pagod na po ako. Hirap na hirap na ako. Just receive that right now. Receive that rest from God. Receive that healing, a spiritual healing, a physical healing today. And Lord, I thank you that you're even preparing us, Lord, for a fresh word. Lord, I thank you, God. And Lord, at the same time, you are causing each and every one of us, Lord, to rise up to rise above our situation, to rise above our circumstance. But the Lord is saying, listen, listen to my voice. Listen to my leading. Don't just listen. Listen to all the voices that you hear around you, but listen. Listen to my voice because know and understand that my sheep, as my sheep, you will hear the leading of my voice, says your God. Lord, I pray for the preaching of the word. Minister to us today. Minister to me today. Lord, I pray that you will speak to me today. We honor you. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. With a big smile, somebody say a big mighty amen. 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 Sabi nga ni Pastor Christian, we're starting a brand new series. Ang title po niyan is Salt and Light. I don't know about you, but when I hear the word salt and light, it's almost automatic that those words comes from Jesus himself. You know, it came from the Sermon on the Mount, Okay. Two quick thoughts pagdating po sa salt and light. Unang-una is, uh, uh, before that, I want to read Matthew 5.13. When Jesus, when, when, when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. Let me just say that one more time. You are the, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. Just two quick thoughts as we start a brand new series. And this is exciting. I really believe it's really timely. Nung sinabi po ito ng Panginoon, uh, uh, He said, You are the salt and the light. Sinabi niya, You, meaning, ba, sa, sa salita po na English uh, grammar, naman, ano? yung you, sometimes it refers to 
you know, a singular form and a plural form. So when the people were hearing the message of God about salt and light, He was not just saying, you are the salt and light, but He was saying, you are the salt and light. Mula sa pinakaharap at pinakadulo na nakikinig ng sermon na ito, you are the salt and light. From the youngest person hearing this message to the oldest person, you are the salt and the light. It refers actually to a pr- plural form. Pero pag kinanta ko po yung kanta na, You give me hope. The, the, the strength, the will to move on. Naiintindihan nyo that I'm not referring to you, but I'm referring to my sweetheart. Yeah. Isa lang, singular lang ang kinakantahan ko. Sweetheart, happy mansory. Yeah. May plaging pa bro. <laughs> We are the salt and light of the world. And isn't it interesting if you're thinking pictures, if you're a visual learner like me, naiintindihan natin na pag sinabing salt as a preserving agent, hindi po iniibig sabihin ng isang butin lang po ng asin. Tama po ba? You know, it's referring to, you know, isang dakot ng, you know, ng asin para dun sa karni mo, di ba? Minamarinate mo yun. Binubuhusan mo yun, pinepreserve mo yun. It's so interesting also as light, the Bible refers to us as it's like a city on the hill, Jesus said. So hindi lamang siya isang ilaw na maliit na, you know, it's not just a flicker of light, but it's a kind of light that cannot be hidden, but because it carries the idea of us being together, salt and light. And secondly, The world needs salt and light. How many of you can agree on me on that? Our world that is decaying, the, our, our world that's deteriorating, our world, yung sitwasyon na lang po natin ngayon, the world desperately needs salt and light. Pero sa araw po na ito ngayon, as we start this brand new series, ang pag-uusapan din po natin ay yung sinabi din ng Panginoon in verse 13 hanggang 16. Sabi niya ganun, but if the salt loses its saltiness, wow, meron parang ganong aspeto na the, the, you know, we can lose that ability to be a preserving agent. How can it be salty again? It can no longer be good for anything. I mean, can you imagine that? You know, you and I can no longer be good for anything if we lose that ability to be a preserving agent in our society. And Jesus continues on with strong words. Sabi niya, you are no longer good for anything. What you're only good at is you'll only be thrown away. And as the Bible says, you will be just be trampled on by people. I mean, those are very strong, sobering words from the Lord. Very important words for us to think about. Na grabe, pwede pala mangyari yun sa faith ko that my faith Christianity can be useless, can be false if I don't understand the message that Jesus is trying to say. And in the same way, you can also lose that ability or that call, not ability, but that call of God to be light. In other words, to shine for our deeds to be seen by people. Yan po ang mga bagay na pag-uusapan natin ngayon. In other words, instead of being a preserving agent, we become part of the decay. Instead of being light to this world, instead of shining, we become part of the darkness. In other words, we will see an account wherein God's people, God's chosen people, have lost their ability to be salt and light. My, my wife is studying counseling uh, right now. She's taking up her master's. Talo na kita bro, nagpapaaral na ako ng master, alo na. <laughs> It's interesting that in some fields of psychology, pinag-aaralan po nila yung mga negative. In other words, in order to have good marriages, they actually study those marriages that did not work. Parang ganun po, no? In order to raise up good, amazing, wonderful children, they actually look and study and dissect, you know, and investigate what happened to those delinquent children. So ganun din po. 
uh, pag-aaralan po natin, titignan po natin ng whatever time have we have left today, we will look at the situation of the people of God. What happened? Ano nangyari when they lost their ability to be sought or their call, sorry, their call to be sought in light. Isaiah chapter 1. Let's start and begin with verses 2 and 3. By the way, this year, we'll be looking at the whole book of Isaiah. Not Sorry, not the whole book, but many of our series will be based on the book of Isaiah. So join in with us, studying and reading in your own quiet times, the book of Isaiah. Magsimula po tayo ng verse 2 and 3. I'm reading from the NLT. Listen, O heavens, pay attention, earth. This is what the Lord says. Ito na po. The children I raised and cared for have rebelled against me. Ayan na po yung sagot. Ano nangyari? The people of God have rebelled against me. Verse 3, Even an ox knows its owner and a donkey recognizes its master's care, but Israel doesn't know its master. My people don't recognize my care for them. It's amazing that the prophet Isaiah even compared God's people Sabi, mas mabuti pa daw ang donkey, mas mabuti pa daw ang ox, mas mabuti pa daw itong mga hayop na ito who's able to recognize their God and their master, their stable, the care of their owner. But my people is in a worse state that they are unable to recognize me. For us to appreciate this better, I found out that the Hebrew word has many descriptions of our shortcomings before God. Ano pong ibig sabihin ito? Ide-differentiate natin po yung sin, yung uh, disobedience, tsaka yung transgression. Yung sin, it carries the idea that sin is, you know, it misses the target. Kung baka may bullseye, you know, sin, in, gen- in a general sense, it misses that target. Yung disobedience naman po, it misses the target but it carries the idea that sometimes it's intentional and sometimes it's unintentional. I'm reminded of a 20, uh, 2004 Summer Olympics. Meron pong athlete. Ang pangalan po niya si Matthew Emmons. Kasali po siya sa rifle shooting competition. So Matthew Emmons at this point was on his way to his second gold medal. So his first nine shots, sa sobra niya pong galing, you know, nag almost bullseye siya, nag almost 10 po yung mga shots niya. In other words, ang pinakamababa po niyang shot was a 9.3. So talagang ang lapit sa bullseye. So on his way to his second gold medal, his last shot, nag-aim po siyang ganyan, no? In-aim po niya, tas psh, bullseye. Kaso nung pagtingin niyang ganun, pagtingin niya, yung score niya, zero. Tapos from first place, naging eighth place. Ano nangyari? He accidentally hit the target nung kanyang kalaban. So ang tawag po doon, na crossfire, maling target po yung tinira yan, na crossfire po niya yung target ng, ng iba. So in other words, disobedience, sin misses the target. Disobedience, sometimes sinasadya. In the case of Matt Emo, hindi sinasadya. He hit the bullseye, but he hit the target of his opponent. Ang rebellion po, iniquity, as, as sometimes the Bible describes it, or transgression, it carries the idea of a stubborn, whoo, stubborn disobedience. Napag-uusapan na rin po natin yung uh, rifle shooting competition. Meron pong nakwento sa akin si Pastor Winston, si Pastor Gilbert, nakwento rin niya sa akin to, a much more deadlier rifle competition contest. It's a most dangerous, most underground kind of competition. Kasi po yung target po, umiikot po yung target. Buhay po yung target, tsaka umiikot. Tapos yung target na nandito sa mga bandang ulo. So inikot po yung target. May lumabas po na machong lalaki, walang t-shirt, napakadumi. Lumabas po siya, may mashing gun. So, ba 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 Tinamaan yung target. Sabi niyang ganun, I'm John. I'm John Rambo. Wow, palakpakan yung mga tao. 
pangalawang contestant, umikot ulit yung, yung, yung tao. May, dum, may lumabas na naka-Amerikana, guwaping na guwaping, oh. Sabi ba naman yung gano'n? Psh, psh. I'm James. I'm James Bond. Balik tayo, I'm Bond. I'm James Bond. Dabi, no? Palapakan yung mga tao. Yung huling contestant, may lumabas, nakasinelas lang, naka Sando, di ba? Walang kaayos. Ay, inikot yung target. Sabi niya, spin the target. Pastor! Umikot na umikot yung target. Sabi niya, gano'n. Tinamaan yung target dito sa ulap. Patay. Sabi niya, gano'n. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tinamaan ko yung... Sino po ba sa inyo nagsisisi na parang, ba't pa ka nag-service ngayon, ano? In other words, God's people at this state were, they were in a sorry state. They were not just disobeying God, they were not just sinning against God, but they were, they have this stubborn disobedience, a kind of disobedience that is actually twisted. Yung po yung nangyayari sa mga panahon na ito. Hindi po tayo nagrarank ng mga kasalanan natin, ano? Hindi po natin na sinasabi, grabe, hindi grabe, mas grabe. No, we're just painting a picture of the condition of God's people at this time. An inner twistedness that intentionally misses the target. Nananadya na po sila. Siguro po ang tanong sa atin, ano kaya ang area ng buhay natin na nananadya na po tayo? Are there areas in our lives that's almost like in that state of stubborn disobedience? In that state of twistedness? Na pag ito na yung tinuturo ng Panginoon sa buhay natin, we almost always have that reason to not follow God. Almost always have that excuse to have an explanation to God. And interestingly, God begins to enumerate all these things to the people of God. Enumerated the, ex the expression of their rebellion. Enumerated the expression of their iniquity. Inisa-isa po ng Panginoon yan. And this is actually a shocking list. From verses 10 to 15, Listen to the Lord, your leaders of Sodom. So tinawag na po silang Sodom and Gomorrah. The people of God being addressed. Sabi nila, ha? Kami, Sodom of Gomorrah? No way. But, but, but the prophet pointed out, you are actually... Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 11, What makes you think I want all your sacrifices, says the Lord. I am sick of your burnt offerings of the rams and fat of the fattened cattle. I get no pleasure from the blood of bulls, lambs, and goats. When you come to worship me, sabi ni Lord, you who ask, who, who ask you to parade through my courts with all your ceremony, sabi niya, stop bringing meaning, meaningless gifts, the incense of your offerings, Disgust me. As for your celebrations, the new moons, the Sabbath, special days of fasting, they are sinful and false. I want no more of your pious meetings. Verse 15, when, when you lift up your hands in prayer, I will not look. Though you offer many prayers, God said, I will not listen. I mean, if you're going to ask me, you know, after being described better than an ox and a donkey, you would expect that God will point out mga bagay na what the Bible considers as an abomination. Their immorality, their, their greed, their selfishness, their, their jealousy. No! It's interesting that God begins to point out church stuff. The seemingly right things to do. Woo! Grabe, di ba? Do you realize that we can do things for God without God in it? We can do the things for God. We can do the things of God without the very presence of God in all of the things that we are actually doing. Ganon po siya katwisted. Ganun po siya ka, wow, Lord. 
May I not be in that kind of a place and situation or a trap that I'm actually, it seems like I'm doing the right things, I'm doing the good things, but yet, God is saying, I do not know you. God is saying, stop watch. Parang sinasabi, Lord, please, itigil mo na yung ginagawa mo. What the sight of it disgusts me. I mean, those are strong words. Some author would say, yung Christianity daw po natin have become churchianity. Of course, without God or Jesus in our faith in what we're doing, how do they lose their saltiness and light? It's because it's coming out from a heart that is rebellious. They have trans transgressions, iniquity, and stubbornness in their hearts. The second thing that we can see in verse 4 Sabi po dito, they have despised the Holy One of Israel. And again, strong words, they have turned their backs on me. The word despise simply means to consider worthless. In other words, the people of God were saying, God, you are not worth my time. A similar thing happened in the book of Malachi, the last chapter, I believe it's in chapter 6. The priest, during their time, they were treating what they're offering to the Lord as with contempt. They were in fact offering defiled animals. They were giving to the Lord in the book of Malachi sacrifices that are deceased, that are lame, and you know, that are, you know, they did not choose it. Basta na lang po sila nagbigay ng kung ano-ano na lang sacrifice. Sabi ni Lord, Eh, kung yung governor nyo nga, you know, to your governor, you will not give that kind of a sacrifice. Tapos sa akin, yan ang mga binibigay nyo. If you look through those passages, I believe it starts with this thing called familiarity. You know, the despise, it's almost like it was in a monster state, pero nagsimula siguro po yun dun sa bagay na familiar. In other words, they treated God as common and ordinary. Do we consider our time with God as worthy? Or have we treated God, the things of God, as common and ordinary? I think we almost always fall in that trap in every area of our lives. Hindi lang po sa relationship natin sa Panginoon. But in everything that we do, everything about us, we almost always fall into that trap of treating others as common and ordinary. When we look at people that we love, people that, you know, who, who are with us in our homes, dahil po siguro sa araw-araw, sa 24 oras, madalas po tayo nagsasama, madalas po tayo nakikita, naka-quarantine tayo together, Famili fam familiarity sets in and be you begin to treat the most important people in your life as common and ordinary. When we look around us, when we feel like things are just happening over and over, pa ulit ulit and ulit na lang, we begin to treat the authorities of this nation as common and ordinary. Tas ganon ganon na lang natin sila pinagsasabihan. We treat the issues of our nation as common and ordinary. I like I like po yung post one time ni Mayor Vico Soto in Pasig. Parang meron pong nag-comment ata dun sa page na sinasabi na Anak, yung corruption, hindi ka pa pinapanganak, nandyan na yan. And I think in that post, in the most gentle reply, sabi rin po ni Mayor Vico, sabi, actually po, hindi pa rin po kayo pinapanganak, <laughs> nandyan na rin po siya. You know, I like how he treats the problem in society not as common and ordinary. How about the poor? You know? Yung nagda-drive po tayo sa C5, you know, along C5, we almost always already know the people that, you know, have we treated them as common and ordinary and have already almost like placed judgments. Eh, ganito yan, eh, ganito yan, eh, ganito yan. So, actually, as a result, because they despise God, because they treated God as common and ordinary, 
it actually basically just reflected how they treated others. Kaya nga sa verse 17, the prophet was encouraging them, or God was telling them, learn to do good, learn to seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the cause of the orphans, fight for the rights of the widows. In other words, the light has become part of darkness. The salt, the preserving agent, has become part of the decay. Why? Because they, are, they have started to oppress. The, they, they have become the oppressors to the oppressed. Instead of helping the poor, they, they treat them as common and ordinary. In other words, our relationship with others is a, is a reflection of our relationship with God. Isn't that interesting? Our relationship with others is a reflection of our relationship with God. Malapit na po tayo matapos, pero come to think of it, all the things that we do, all our religious practices, whether that's worship, whether that's prayer, whether that's offering something to the Lord, whether that's a sacrifice for the Lord, do you realize those are actually symbols of, of what's in our hearts? It's, it's an act of, you know, it's an act of worship. It symbolizes what's in our hearts. But do you realize what determines the real condition of our hearts is actually based on how we treat others. Everything else is just an expression. Everything else is just a symbolism of, of what's in our hearts. But the real test, actually comes in. The reality of that symbol is actually seen on how we treat others. No wonder Jesus said, Matthew 5, 23 to 24, Therefore, if, you're, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there you remember your brother and sister that you have something, uh, that he has something against you. Sabi niya, gano, leave your gift. Leave your gift in front of the altar and what first go and be reconciled to them and come. Come back and offer your gift. As we're about to end, ano po yung problema? May rebelliousness, may twistedness, may transgression. They treated God as common and ordinary. So what is the solution? Is the solution more religiosity? Is the solution more good stuff? Is the solution more social involvement? The answer, of course, is a resounding no. I want to submit to you our tendency. If Christianity is like driving a car, sino po ba sa inyo nagmamaneho na? Yan. Sino po ba sa inyo expired na yung license nyo at nagmamaneho pa rin kayo? <laughs> if you're driving a car, if Christianity or our faith is like driving a car, Solution natin. Paminsan, we veer towards the right. Madalas po tayong kumakanan. And I want to warn you, it's actually a ditch. Trap po siya, bangin po siya. Lord, sige, driving a car, faith. Tapos minsan, nagkamali ako, bug, nadrive ako sa kanan. Kanan, right. I'll do more right things. I'll do more right stuff. I'll help. I'll sacrifice. I'll do all these things. I'll give more. You know, I'll contribute. I'll help. Small group pa more. Bible pa more. Pray pa more. Right. Paminsan din, kumakaliwa po tayo. Kinakaliwa natin si Lord. Kaliwa meaning, impossible naman yun eh. Wala naman talaga makakagawa yun. So, I'm sure God will understand. So, ikaw, tenet, kaliwa, you tend to do all the wrong things. I'm sure God is a God of love. I'm sure God will forgive me of all my folly. Mabuti si Lord. You begin to exercise that licentious kind of a lifestyle. But Isaiah presents to us not something to the right, not something to the left, but a U-turn. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let's settle this. Come now, let's reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. 
Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as snow. It's going back to God. What will help us in our rebellion, what will help us in our sin, it's going back to the grace of God. Another point, when Jesus said, come to me, sabi niya, come to me, all you are, all who you are, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy when you're veering towards the right, and my burden is light when you sometimes veer towards the left. It's going back to the grace of God in our lives. I like to call the music group up. A salt and light. I want us to realize that we are unable to preserve ourselves. Somebody say amen that we don't have that ability to actually preserve ourselves. In this season wherein we are having difficult times, times that are hard, hardships, testings, all kinds of situations, we go back to the grace of God. Interestingly also, the Bible describes you and me to be a lamp. He didn't, he didn't say, you are the star or you are the sun. Lamb carries the idea that we need a source of light. That we cannot light up ourselves. Somebody else needs to light us up in order for us to have light. Let's all stand right now as we pray. Just one last thought before we pray. In the book of Isaiah, the people of God despise God. Or actually, it's specifically it's said there, the people of God despise the Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. We can also see in verse 6, or sorry, chapter 6 of Isaiah, that the prophet Isaiah if there's one encounter he had with the Lord, if there's one encounter that he did not forget, he saw a God, he saw the angels saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. If the people of God despised the Holy One of Israel, Isaiah the prophet recognized and had the revelation of God being holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy simply means iba. Holy means transcendent. Holy means the absolutely other one. It actually means the one like whom there is no other. It actually means that we have a God whose character is love, is truth, is righteousness, is justice. If you look at the English dictionary, Holiness actually means spiritual excellence. I pray all of us in this series, in this season of our lives, will begin to encounter our holy God, our spiritually above no other excellent God. Let's all lift up our hands as we pray right now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, just like Isaiah, Lord, we pray for an encounter with you. Lord, a fresh encounter with you in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we lift up our hands, Lord, we, we surrender to you. Lord, we realize that it is through a life that has been changed by God that we can bring about change, that we can bring about lasting change to others. Lord, we ask that you forgive us. Forgive us of our shortcomings. Forgive us of our disobedience. Forgive us of our sin. Forgive us of our stubborn disobedience. Lord, we lift up to you our iniquities, our transgressions in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we're lifting up our hands, we receive your word saying, though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. We receive your grace today. We receive the abundant provision of your grace in my life today. In Jesus' name.
Amen. You can put down your hands. If you have not given your life to the Lord, if you have not surrendered your life to the Lord, we want to give you this opportunity to ask forgiveness for your sins and to receive Him as Lord and Savior. If you're worshiping with us online, here with us on site, if you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to just quietly lift up your hands wherever you may be worshiping with us. Just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I want to receive my brand new life. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Join me in this prayer of salvation. Let's recite it all together and say, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that the separation between us is because of my sin. I confess that I have sinned and I have fallen short of your glory. I thank you that you have sent your son Jesus to pay the penalty for all my sins. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe that you raised him from the dead. And Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. And I ask you to forgive and cleanse me. I want to turn away from everything the Bible calls sin and receive Jesus as my Lord, my Master, my Savior. Help me to love, serve, and obey you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, we want to say congratulations. You've made the best decision of your life today. If you need help in the decision you just made, if you're here with us online, we can pray with you. If you're, worship, if you're worshiping with us online, you can just click the start box. Just leave your name and your contact number. Before we sing this song, I want us to lift up our hands one more time. Just an act of worship and an act of surrender. Lord, we pray for a fresh encounter from you. Just say the words, holy, holy, holy. Just go ahead and say those words. and Say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Lord, there is no one like you. Lord, we pray for a, an encounter with you today. And Lord, I thank you that as we worship you, we will also end up saying, Lord, here am I, send me. Send me to ever, wherever you need me to be for me to be salt and light to this world. Let's, let's sing this song. Let's worship before we dismiss.
that is our prayer. And even as Pastor Mike preached about it earlier, as you wrote it in Isaiah, Lord, the kind of faith, the kind of walk that you desire for us is a kind of relationship that that's, that's not just with us, but it has the ability to impact the people around us. It has the ability, Lord, to be a salt and light to this world. And even as Pastor Mike reminded us, Lord God, that our light and our saltiness is not based on what we are or based on who we are, but the source is You. And so, Lord, we ask, would You please fill Your people once again? For those of us in this room, can You please lift up Your hands with me? For those of you watching online, if you can, please lift up your hand as well. Father in heaven, we look to you as the source of light, as the source, Lord, of grace to be a preserve, preserving agent in this society. And Lord, we pray right now, would you please empower your people once again. Father, even in this season, Lord, thank you that you will cause every family represented here, Lord, to speak hope, to speak life, to speak faith, Lord God. But not just speaking, but there's going to be a grace to demonstrate, Lord God, what being a salt and a light is even in this season. Some of you, you God will give you grace. God will give you ideas how to be a blessing to your neighbors, how to be a blessing to those who are, you know, um, yung mga may sakit po siguro sa paligid natin or even yung sa komunidad natin. Lord, salamat Panginoon. Bibigyan niyo po kami ng puso at ng abilidad, Lord God, na makatulong po sa mga tao sa paligid namin. And Lord, we thank you. You are the source of all these things. And we pray, let your church, let your people be the salt and light indeed in this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give God praise. Praise God. Praise God. For those of us with uh, online, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May His face turn towards you and give you peace. God bless you. We are dismissed. Those of us inside.